Today we're doing an episode called Errand of Mercy. Errand of Mercy. And it was uh, aired in March 23rd, 1967. It was directed by John Newland. Don't know the guy. And written by some some guy in the 60s, Gene L. Coon. Gene L. Coon. Such a well-written episode. My favorite so far episode. I'm already going to rate it. I, I was saying, am I going to go too high on this? I'm going to give it a 91. I love this episode for so many reasons. I think it's a beautiful episode. So there you go. That's my rating, 91. That is awesome. So I don't know how you want to start. I mean, this is this is a, a wonderful episode. And The Enterprise is attacked. The Enterprise goes to a planet. They encounter beings there that are indifferent to everything. And there, and Kirk is trying to convince them that Klingons are bad, will protect you, will help you, and gets frustrated with the local indigenous population, who says, no problem, no problem at all. And we see some green goats. Well, okay. I'm, I just wanted to yeah. subtitle this, Errand of Mercy, right? The, the pink goats. But I know they're green. I just love saying pink goats. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I don't know that I could do better, much better on the nutshell. I think except that you gave away that they're, they're attacked by Klingon. So yes, it's a Klingon. It's our first Klingon uh, Federation uh, episode, I believe. Skirmish, yeah. You said you you said Klingons. The Klingons attack. You 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 missed at first. I didn't know you were going to say because you came back and said it was the Klingons. I I thought you were going to come back to that later. But the Klingons are the ones that attacked the Enterprise. But before they attacked, they were already heading to, they were already heading to the planet. Uh, what's the name of that planet, Bruce? We and are to proceed to Organia. Organia. So is it Organia or Orga Organia? Organia. Organia. Mm -hmm. Organia. And the reason that they're going to Organia is because it's a Class M planet and it's strategically placed planet to where it's beneficial to the Federation if they take it or the Klingons if they take it. It's it's kind of like uh, Guam in World War II, right? Isn't that kind of similar? Yes, yes. Yeah. So so they, they want to take it and uh, Captain Kirk, I love this episode. Captain Kirk uh, is talking to the Arganians and as Bruce just said, they're indifferent. They're like, mm, everything's cool. And, and Captain Kirk, of course, is like, everything's not cool. Have you dealt with these people before? They're they're going to take you over. They're going to they're going to make this planet their own, and you're going to be a slave culture to these guys, right? Okay. And and this is the this is the piece that you were talking about. We Starfleet Command anticipates a surprise attack. We are to proceed to Organia to take whatever steps are necessary to prevent the Klingons from using it as a base. Strategically sound, Spock says. Organia is the only Class M planet in the disputed area, ideally located for use by either side. Organia's description is inhabited by humanoids, a very peaceful, friendly people living on a primitive level. They already know this, apparently. Uh, but they uh, think that they're evolving. They think they're evolving before they get to the planet. Before that, yes, they think. But yes. um, little do they find out later. Uh, some tidbits. So the poor Oganians are just sitting there, wanting to kind of live their peaceful little life and have a little uh, place where people could come and visit and enjoy themselves. And what happens? They got the Klingons fighting for it. They got Kirk wanting to take it. And, and Spock is kind of like, yeah, it makes sense. Let's go take this place over. On this episode that say, that say, is it possible that this is another long episode like Arena? They have something going on in the Enterprise. They meet with Aelborn and Pink Goats. They they yeah. have <laughs> the whole explosion thing going on where they get to, they say, we got to show these guys. Coor has his thing, little meeting with the captain dancing around the whole war thing. Then we have then we have a rescue attempt by Aelborn there and they're in the, uh, the brig. And then they have some arguments about why war is good and stuff. There's so much to this episode, so many pieces to it. I'm wondering if it's beginning, I'm beginning to think this is one of those long episodes, one that just, how did they yeah. pack it all in there? 
So Elborn, uh, they land on the planet Kirk and Spock. There's only two people that go down to the planet surface. And they land and they're outside of this big gate. And then they got their green goats and they, and all it's really amazing to me. There's nobody there when they land, and then all of a sudden there's all these people around them. And I'm going, this is amazing, you know, because it would have been cool if they would have called action a little bit sooner and all the people and they boom beam down right in the middle of the people because they go, they don't seem to really even notice that we're here, right? Yes. Uh, Isn't I think that Spock a says that to Kirk here? or something. Yeah, yeah, they're not even, they don't even care. So you got these people wandering by them. And Aragorn, I love this part. He comes out and he greets them. I think his greeting is something like this with his hands, right? And uh, so he's kind of greets Captain and and Spock kind of give the greeting back. Kirk greets him back. And he says, well, who's the leader? Well, there's no real leaders here, but I guess I'll do in a pinch, right? So they're walking into the main gates and Aragorn has to, has to, kind of changed the rhythm of his pace because I think Kirk and Spock, their lines, and I talked to Bruce about this a hundred times, so he's tired of hearing about it already, but they have to kind of, he's staggering his steps so he could hit his mark so they could say their line so he could kind of turn around and answer them and say, you guys, you guys can feel free to do whatever you want here. Just check out the, cause, cause Spock wants to go and check out the planet or at least where they landed so that he could get more information about these people. And so I love that he has to stagger step to kind of, because I used to, I, you know, again, I think I refer to the military too much, but I used to have to learn how to shuffle step when I was in the military to kind of re-get in step with everybody else. And I think that's what I'm kind of seeing him doing is that kind of the shuffle step where it looks like you're still walking, but you're kind of just holding your place. So I, I love that part. And I love that uh, later on, Kirk uses that again, but we're not there when he's kind of based and telling him, and you're right, the layer upon layer upon layer in the story, right? Just to go uh, kiss my butt. I think I think Captain Kirk is going, kiss my butt, and he's kind of using that, like, you know, his his gestures to kind of, their their greetings to kind of say it to him. Do you know where I'm talking about in the movie? In the, in the uh, meeting room. In, in the, yes, exactly, exactly. All right, so I'm going to throw it back at you, Bruce. So, uh, we're landed on the planet, I think, and your notes are probably landed on the planet, too. Yes, yes, we're on the planet, and, and uh, Spock makes a comment that it's curious, no, to nobody cares. The shuffle step, as you said, they move, <laughs> and Spock says, I want to go, go about my business and do some research. Yeah, right. he wants to go. There. Now, on that shuffle step, did you did you catch that this time? Did you see what I'm talking about? Because I know I've talked to you about it a few times. You have. And I'm right there where they walk through the gate. Yep. Yeah. Here, here he is. He turned around. They're walking in. He's swinging his arms. Yep. He's not moving much. He's not moving. Yeah. That, up, up. He's going a little slower. So I saw. I saw. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Stands out to you. Doesn't it cracks it? me up. It does. It really does. It really does. And you said the In people, passing. the people magically appear. I noticed off right off the bat. Everybody loves this orange brownish tunic. Everybody's wearing the orange thing. And so I'm tracking yeah. this guy, and he's got a three quarter. Another's got a full length version. They've all got their little their little uh, uh, bear their their um, leather wrapped fur leggings on <laughs> yeah 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 exactly exactly with the look those were like uh what do they call those that they have now they're still popular with women they've had them what 10 15 years now where they've been very uh uggs like an ug i think <laughs> right an ug boot so this so orange... see star trek was always ahead of its time <laughs> yes uh tomorrow is yesterday i think the whole episode is in yeah. the future, takes place in the future <laughs> So these, so uh, this, these three-quarter length uh, orange clothed guy go walks into the compound. They walk in, and then the same guy starts walking back out again. Uh, I something curious that came up yeah. at that point is they're talking to the guy. Spock is ready to leave, and I'm thinking, uh, why isn't the prime directive in effect? Why are these guys? 
just coming down and saying, I'm Captain Kirk from a starship. What's the deal there? Shouldn't they be, uh, shouldn't they not? They, it's all of a sudden they want this planet. So the prime directive is out the door. You know what? I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind, but I think you're absolutely correct. He's, he's it's says, a strategically fighting thing. I think yeah. because he's on the starship, right? And they say, we have declared war and Spock and he goes, we don't want that. And Spock goes, isn't it amazing how you humans, you always get what you don't seem to want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. So, so I guess they just, at that time when he's reading the declaration of war, he's like, the prime directive is gone. It's, <laughs> it's all on baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Kirk comes into William Shatner waltzes into the, uh, into that meeting room and at that oh, i don't point, think i don't think we should forget it exactly yet though bruce i don't know that we told the people or maybe you did already in your your intro that the, the uh enterprise oh. was attacked well well kirk and the rest of them were on the enterprise so it's not like they're not only did they declare war with the klingons or the klingons declared war with the federation but they did already attack the enterprise so so war is actually on at this time so yeah, I, I'm back the, on the planet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the people, and you told me that. Yes, there was. <laughs> uh, Kirk has a some sort of uh, away belt or or landing party belt on, and on that belt he has a communicator velcroed on and a phaser, and the phaser is sideways at his hip in the front on the right. And the communicator is vertical in the back under his shirt. And you get to see all of this once he goes into the, the meeting room, not when he's outside there talking with the, with the guy, with Aylborn. Right, 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 right. Now, isn't, can't you see Spock's, too? Spock's shirt seems to be up at one point to me. And I think you're kind of looking at the back of his belt, too, unless he just didn't tuck it in after he went to the bathroom or actually. Oh. Didn't untuck it after we went to the bathroom. Oh, I didn't bother taking the screenshot of that because I thought, oh, what, what, what does that matter? But you are right. In in one sequence, he gets up, and that it's it's. Oh, that was on the bridge. On the bridge. Oh, was it on the bridge when they're Spock leaving? And yeah. Kirk, yeah. Kirk are going to go to the turbo lift to leave, and Spock acts just like McCoy in uh, the Naked Time when Sulu is on in sick bay. And he says, will you release? I, I'm okay, doctor. And and McCoy goes and snaps his fingers and says, release him. To somebody. <laughs> and, and here, they both walk towards the tur turbo lift, but Spock has motions with a pointed finger right at another technician, another Benson or something, and say, hmm? points at him, and then points back to where he was sitting, like, you're taking my spot, I'm out of here, go. And when he got yeah, up... Yeah. And walk towards the turbo lift after he did his little arrow motion, uh, finger motion, say, You take my spot. Uh, you can see his shirt. Yeah, he has. Yes. Spock needs to do the Picard maneuver and needed to pull that down. <laughs> pull it down. Yeah. Kirk whips out a communicator and it opens up 180 degrees and he has to hold the back end up so that that thing doesn't flip open too far. I wonder uh, why they didn't fix that during the episodes. I, I, maybe they didn't think of it as big enough a deal. It's not yeah. a deal. It's only Bruce's yeah. deal. Come on. <laughs> uh, Coor, he comes in, does not know that the captain is... Now, Coor is the captain of the Klingons, and he landed on the planet, and now, yeah, he comes in. Yeah. And he's like, business, uh, war, we aim to win, and he comes out with the... Klingon Empire Occupation Proclamation. One of us yep. gets killed, a thousand of you get killed. Uh, he is all business and he is... I just love how he just like comes in and he just he just lays the law down. It just It's like Kirk was so impassionate about talking to these guys. Like you said, they're so indifferent. And he's going, look, man, deal with the Federation because the Klingons are not like us. They're just going to take you over. You're going to be a slave race and all this other stuff. And like you said... Core comes in and he just lays that law out. I mean, he just he just lays it right out. There, you guys are under occupation. We're we're here. Yep. You're done. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, and you can tell Kirk, just like he said, you you don't like to be pushed. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have sit there with that stupid smile on your face like everyone has here. Smiles. Yeah. Smiles. 
I don't trust people who <laughs> smile too much. But that's okay. Uh, He's got a mind sifter and he can make you a vegetable. <laughs> yeah, but, now, the funny thing is, is he didn't trust the people with smile and 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 that was just a foreshadowing of really what happened, right? Because the, he really couldn't trust these guys. He didn't know who they were. He didn't do his research. He had no idea what he was walking into. Right, yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, uh, after the occupation proclamation was introduced to the captain and he says, hey, of course, I'm going to print these babies up in the meantime, keep everybody in, in line. Yeah. Poor also says that Spock is a, uh, is under his uh, watch, right? I mean, they're watching, they're watching Spock. He's an enemy of the state. So these two guys are walking down, uh, t discussing what just happened, and they bump into some Klingons. And the Klingon, uh, the, this is the first encounter they have with regular Klingons, uh, really smack, smacks Kirk against the wall. Watch yourself, right? You remember that incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, happened, I do. Happens a second time right after they say whoa whoa sorry they walk a little further they stand in front of some stairs they discuss that they're gonna have to do something they turn around to walk up the stairs and these klingons are coming down the stairs but that one didn't work because here these two klingons come down and the one that's in the way should have just made kirk move or brush this other klingon is like getting out of shatner's way <laughs> <laughs> it did not work. It never works for me when I watch that. I am always watching the Klingon doing the natural human gesture of, oh, we're a little bit too close. And he moves aside. And it's out of yeah, yeah, character yeah, for yeah, the Klingon. Yeah. I, uh, I like the way uh, uh, Spock steps in the way because he knows that Kirk, that's right, right where they're going to get in that fight, right? Kirk wants to pound that Klingon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love the way Spock just oh, excuse us, or whatever he says right in that moment, right? Just to diffuse the situation. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty yeah. cool little maneuver by, by Kirk. And then Cap uh, by Spock, and then Kirk goes, oh, you thought I was going to punch him or something? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, you didn't really think that I was going to beat his head in, did you? I thought you might. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but as you say, we still have a job to do. We'll receive no help from the Organians, maybe. But sooner or later, they're going to start re resenting how the Klingons run things. If we could prove to them. So they're, they're going to hatch a plan, aren't they? Uh, lots of pyrotechniques in this episode. Lots of explosions and sparks and, and fire. And oh, it's beautiful. I took a bunch of shots of the beginnings of it. It was I bet there were people having fun doing those uh, those fireballs. Did you remember when the explosions happened the first time? He puts the little thing in the box where all the munitions were, and then they run away. And they run, in my, in my opinion, they're running perpendicular to the stuff. Okay, that makes sense. But when the camera's on them, they're running towards this big wall. They're tiny little people in this huge, <laughs> huge wall. And here comes this blast, and they get thrown against this wall. and. Every time I see that, I go, I wish you had not been so, uh, what's the name of, uh, what's the name of the cartoon, uh, Acme? Roadrunner. Yeah, yeah, oh, Roadrunner. Oh, 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 the the Roadrunner, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what's and, and, and Coyote, yeah. Coyote, that they would have been less Coyote-like and actually ran away from that big wall because they were just asking to be exploded <laughs> and pushed into that wall. Well, you know, what's so funny to me is also that set, right? So they only had a limited budget, you could tell, because Kirk, when the Klingon is coming around and he runs up and hides on the stairs, right? It's like almost it's in eye line of the Klingon, right? Yes. So it was so funny to me that he, he's able to hide there. I'm like, really? You're just like, you know, it was so he funny. Runs, it was like, runs up uh, the you know. stairs and he crouches down on the second <laughs> The second layer, and the guy just walks right by. <laughs> oh, if I'm flat enough, if I'm chameleon. Baby. Yeah, like he's a cat. <laughs> it won't yeah. see me. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that. That just cracks me up. It just cracks me up. Uh, yeah, so uh, so there was some staging things, or they call it blocking, I think, that the, that the director, I don't know who the director was, 
but I wish he would have blocked it different, right? Like, like when Kirk at that same point where he's hiding on the stairwell and he tells Kirk, uh, he tells Spock to go hide around the corner. It would have been kind of cool if Kirk would have went with him and hit around the corner, right? And then you wouldn't have been able to see the one. But I know that they wanted to feature uh, Captain Kirk a lot in the shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had so, to jump off the stairs. He had to take him out. This is William Shatner. That's true. Right? That's true, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to tear his shirt off. And <laughs> <laughs> you have to take your shirt off? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it yeah. was really kind of cool. And also, uh, what cracks me up is when the Klingons are marching through that dome area, right? And then Kirk has the garage. And, and then he, the last one, quote unquote, comes by and he jumps out and puts the, the string around his neck, the garage, right? And they're saying, how, we're, uh, I forget what Kirk was asking. I mean, what Captain Kirk was asking him, but he was asking him some questions there. And uh, I was like, I was, it cracked me up because there was no way that Kirk could have even, I mean, there might have been another formation coming after those guys that would have totally got Kirk. So I don't know how he figured, oh, these are the last guys there. It, the it, it was, guy. it was, Right. You're grabbing the last guy. You hope you're grabbing the last guy. Well, you better know you're grabbing the last guy. How did you know it was the last guy? And here we are, only 30, 25 minutes into the episode where where Coor finds out that the cap, the Barona is, is the captain, and they sit down to talk. It's like, oh my god. Right. And and the cool thing is, is it reminded me of like a guy with a girl, right? You go to a party and you meet a girl at the party and you want to kind of get her off alone. He wanted his alone time with Captain Kirk, right? Ah, you're coming. Yeah, Kirk's coming back with me. We're going to hang out and have a couple drinks and just get to know each other. Too bad we can't fight each other right now, but you know, he's our prisoner, but we're going to hang out together. It was so cool, that little, that little uh, interaction there. And then Kirk, He's funnily dismissive. He's he's humorously dismissive of Core because Core's member interrogating him, and yeah. he goes, "Oh, you know the explosions. You did that, right? Yeah, you know, I don't know that little explosion you had out there. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. I hope it didn't hurt anything that you guys needed, was it? You know? <laughs> uh, but you guys didn't. <laughs> but the the Klingons, this Klingon in particular, is really a Klingon. No funny Klingon, no trouble with Tribbles yeah. Klingon. Uh, yeah. Really, really good because he does say, hey, I mean, sure, we're having drinks and all, but really, you're going to either tell me or I'm going to rip your mind apart. Uh, but why does the bad guy give him 12 hours? And why does the bad guy send Kirk back into the cell, or not back, into the same cell where he can work up devious plans with Spock? What is it with these uh, megalomaniacs? <laughs> <laughs> they want to rule the world, and they I'll, I'm going to give you 12 hours. I was kind of like taking the Klingons, and and okay, this is my own thinking, but it's it, it kind of was like there were kind of uh, there was a parallel that I was getting, you know, kind of ripping uh, Kirk's brain, you know, and just getting the information. It just seemed to me like there was some parallels. Now, maybe I'm just really reaching here, but I, I felt like there was some some parallels to World War II and the Allies and the Germans and the stuff like that during this whole confrontation. He said with his friend, not with his... Uh, he had he already had really identified uh, Spock for who he was right away. I mean, he identified him. As soon as the Aragons, Ar Aragonians or whatever, Oregonians Ar told him who he was... Organian. So when that's when Kirk kind of does this, which means go piss up a pole, right? He's just like, yeah, to you too, man. <laughs> oh, that's right. He did do that when I he just, walked out and the Klingons, the two guards took him away. He had time to make that uh, gesture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then they go put him in the cell and then of course they're saved by who? Aleborn saves the day. How? They're stunned. And, and, but they're also pissed off about it. They're very angry that he would like give them up and then go save them. And he's going, what's wrong with you guys? Right. So Kirk starts acting. When I start seeing these two characters in particular, because if you look at Spock in the episode, he's kind of like a bystander to me. He, he starts looking at the situation. And I loved where they placed Spock outside of the action between these two children. Because 
Cor and Kirk are two little kids and they just start arguing as little kids. And I can imagine two parents standing there and going, these are two little kids and they're just arguing nonsensical stuff, right? Yeah. And so I just love how this starts going back and forth and they, the writer, uh, I forgot, who'd you say wrote this? Uh, Coons, Coon, right? Coon, uh, Gene Coon. Gene Coon. I love the way it kind of just keeps building and it just seemed to me like two little kids arguing in the back of a car, right? It's like nonsensical. They're just like, they just got to keep going. One of them has to be right. And who are you to tell, like their parents, who are you to tell us to stop arguing? I want to argue about this French fry on the floor. He dropped it, not me. And, 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 uh, and then Kirk, of course, has a realization finally, you know, cause, uh, I don't know why I can't remember his name, but the, the leader of the people. Aylborn. 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 Kind of says, what, you're arguing to have war? And that, of course, when Kirk kind of goes, well, you're right. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is not a good argument to be having right now. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool to me that that they kind of were they were kind of boiling it down, boiling it down and letting it sit and saying, because it's true, right? We got in a war. We, we fought the Japanese in World War Two. And now we're like. We have such a respect for the Japanese and we have such a respect. They have respect, for, I think, for Americans. So there's this mutual respect. And that's what Aragorn was saying. You guys are going to be fast friends in the future. Why fight now? Right. You know, and, but sometimes you have to do it. I remember in high school or junior high, I got in a fight with this guy and I don't know how I knew we were going to be friends. And we got in a big fight and it was like a real big physical fight and i just knew somehow that we were going to be friends and after the fight we, we we became fast friends we were like almost inseparable after that unnecessary here the organians are absolutely appalled uh become physically ill from the thought or knowing that we are going to do horrible things uh, that we're fighting yeah to each other yeah exactly yeah so the, I just love the way they just kind of let the pot boil and let us kind of look at it. And I love the way Spock was, he was us. Spock was us watching the episode. If you look at Spock, he's kind of looking and he's understanding what's happening as it's happening. He's looking at Kirk. He's looking at Kor. He's seeing this incredibly weird argument that's going on. He's looking at the Aragonians, Oregonians. And they're watching this and going, this is stupid, right? And and I just love that. It's kind of like the outsider yes. viewpoint, checking yes. it out. Yeah. No. And and that's the right role for Spock because Spark, Spock is the outsider in I mean, that's why we have this character. He is mis displaced. He is in amongst humans on the ship. He gets the alternate view. He gets to look at it. So they used them perfectly. Yeah, they used them perfectly. They really did. Yeah. yeah. They, let's see. Terrible, inconceivable, savage. That's part of my notes, you know, uh, that the poor Organians, uh, you know, can't imagine what we're doing. Uh, Spock, I have notes from uh, the 90s. I put, pulled a note and it says, Spock doesn't take his tricorder. He shuts the cabinet door. So I don't know if it's clear or not, but to me at that time, and I and I was looking this time and I was going, it's not too clear. They asked the Organians, where's our phasers and communicators? And they kind of yeah. gave them up and said, yeah, let them, what, what's it going to hurt? Go let them take their damn toys. And so they opened up the cabinet, but it doesn't look like, doesn't look like he, Spock reached for the tricorder or that that part was shown on film. He may have grabbed it. Um, and, but, 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 you know, you, I'm glad you pointed that out because Kirk threatens uh, the Aragonian. He pulls his chair around, right? Very forcefully throws his yes. chair. Yes, and so the other one, this is where the blocking's kind of wrong or the dialogue. They should have had the other one just keep talking, but he's, his dialogue ended as far as the script is. So he stopped talking. And then... And then uh, the other one starts talking. It was funny. I, I'm like, I don't know why they don't write overlapping dialogue a lot of times instead of letting them, you know, having his line in. And then they should have just let it go over the top of them. Yes, yes, yes. 
I'm looking for that. Yep, here's the chair. Here's the chair sequence. He stops. He, they yeah. stop him in sentence. Yeah. He stops talking when, in fact, they could have made yeah. it a mishmash of discussion. Yeah. yeah. I have no great love for you. He's he's about had it with these with these wishy washy <laughs> guys on the planet. These Arganians are crazy. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, and uh, uh, there was a little fun banter with the. Uh, um with the uh, odds thing spock says i should say oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 7824.7 to one but i can't be precise you know and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then he goes tar many and he, he he their odds get better and kurt goes well we're getting better <laughs> exactly but of course they're the heroes they're gonna knock down each obstacle as they go around along until they finally get to that guy and choke the last guy walking through the door and nobody hears or sees anything. It's yeah, good. yeah. It's good. Absolutely. Well, I love how when Spock gives them the pants, a lot of people, when they get the pants right, it's different actors. Some will just fall down. They just go limp. This one goes, Wah! and then he falls down. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a uh, a score before we even begin. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think about this episode? <laughs> what? Tell me why this is so high so quick and you had to blurt out your score. I, because I just I think it's fantastic. I love I love the misstep. I love like I keep telling you. I don't know why that just cracks me up. I think it's it's just in I I love like you said, that little where where we just where the guy cut off is talking and there's no overlap in talking. Yep. It's so like old school. I think I watched something where they they do let the overflow of conversation because I saw some director saying that's how it really happens in real life is people talk over each other, right? But I love I love that that I and I know it's so obvious where you kind of get that you're arguing to beat the crap out of each other, right? And, and, and everyone's looking at you going, are you guys nuts? And it just, it, I don't know why I just think that it's really cool that it, they just let it boil. Like I said, they just let it happen. And, and like I just said, with Spock and stuff, I think that it just kind of like, oh, and then, and, and the thing that everyone missed is how I think, you know, later on Spock goes, they're so far above us. It's like us and the amoeba, right? Yeah. They're so far more advanced. And I, I don't know, I guess these guys were just tolerating them. They're just like sitting there going, why are these guys so crazy? They're visiting our planet and they're nuts. And, and I don't know, it's just cool to me, the way that they set this up, the way that they, they blocked it or they let the whole episode and they got the castle on the hill. You just don't know what you're walking into. And core had no idea when he's walking in and saying, I don't like your smiles and stuff. He had no idea what he was walking into. I think I just kind of adore this episode because nobody really gets it. You know, they just let it, they let the whole thing play out. And I guess you could, you could argue that on a lot of Star Trek episodes. But for me, it was just wonderful how, like you said, it's layer upon layer upon layer. And they just let the layers kind of come. And then in the end, you're going, these guys are like, yeah, we can't deal with you guys anymore, right? You ain't going to fight but we're not dealing with you anymore. And I thought that was, and then they go, well, I guess we're not going to fight, you know? And uh, what a they shame. Dro they a dropped shame. enough hints yeah. during the show mm -hmm. that these Organians are powerful, but they didn't drop enough for us to, I think, I think it was so perfect, yeah. the amount, right? Yeah. So what you were describing, and I was thinking going through the episode again, and it's always the same thing. You're uh, uh, you're surprised who you're dealing with. It isn't blatant. It wasn't like they they were preaching. Uh, yeah, these guys are the smart ones. It was just fed out slowly. Yeah. Um, so here here's a here's an example. Hmm. I was in a race one time. It was a, a long race, a, run, a, a running race. We were running, and I'm standing there talking, and this guy's talking to me about the race, and I'm looking around at the participants in the race, right? It wasn't a huge, massive Los Angeles foot race. It was a smaller. So I'm standing there and I'm talking to this guy 
And I'm looking and I'm saying, oh, I bet that guy's pretty quick or that woman, I bet she's got a good pace on her. And, that, and I'm pointing to all these people, right? That guy that I was talking to was the lead runner in that race. And I had no idea who I was talking to. He was so far ahead of everybody. It blew my mind. <laughs> and I think that's, that's the same thing here, right? You don't really know who you're talking to. You don't know who it is until you get to the end and you go, oh my God, this is great. You know? And, and I think that's what I get about this. No one knows. Kirk's got his thing. We're the best thing that's going to happen to you. The Klingons come in. You guys are toast. You're under our thumb. And they're going, and they're going, nothing's happening here. No one died. No one did. You know, they keep telling them, no, you guys, are, no, we need to take care of you now. When Kirk goes, well, I think we need to take care of you, Kirk, you know, is going to take care of us. Go screw yourself, right? <laughs> I think that's why I love it. I think that's why it puts it so high to me is they they played it out so well that the episode was just so, so well done. And the actors, the if you look at the table, of course, it's very sexist. But if you look at the table of elders, they're all very old actors. These guys are, you know, the one actor's not not that old, but but all the rest of the table, you know, those guys didn't live too long after they recorded that episode because even that one guy that was talking you know he could barely say his lines but i just think that there was so much respect on casting the, that those people it was to me it was a beautiful thing so that too that humanistic respect for life that really was there they could have got a lot of young actors to be in that thing but they didn't those guys were really well seasoned older actors i mean they were really quite old I think, yes, and and that and that impressed me a lot. Yeah, yeah, I totally totally agree with you. Very very well done. A um, lot of a lot of fun to rewatch this episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I saw it, I thought this this is a good episode. So yeah, I think this was one. It, it tickled me the most, and I go, this is, this is good. This is a good episode. It's like you don't know who you're dealing with here. But luckily, they were a benevolent race and not a, you know, not a race because then those everyone would have been toast. So luckily, they happened to go to the right planet to do their shenanigans. Right? It could have been a totally different output, depending on who they were dealing with. Yes, could have been the dark side of the force. I mean, <clears throat> uh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we <were laughs> you think you're taking care of us? We just took over the Klingons. And we got the Federation under control, and you guys are here, so get to work. <laughs> um, uh, score. Uh, you gave it a, a Kevin score already of 91. Like 91. 91. Yes. yes, I don't know what to. I don't know what to say. I like the episode. Uh, I think it's yeah. it's up there. It's first season. It's well done. It's got a lot of stuff. I think uh, it might all be one of these long episodes. I'll have to think about that. It seems like yeah, they got a ton of stuff in there. Um, I will. Uh, it's up there. Uh, do you know what my high number is? I haven't even given anything a 90 yet. I don't think. No, you have not. No one, neither one of us has dipped into the 90s or have gotten to the 90s. You're like 85, I think, is your top score almost. 95, maybe 86. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, want to put it up uh with what else i have had fun with so uh, uh it's gonna have a 87 or 88 or something like that all uh, right yes. 87 87 no. I, on, on on aaron to mercy in my 87 oh, yeah, might yeah, be yeah, too yeah, low. Yeah. it might need an 89 but i already 89. said 87 so we'll see where that ends up when we uh okay. grade on the okay. curve and you know what? I, I think that's golden of you, really, because and I'm going to give send you a gold star because this is not a bottled episode and you're rating it really high. So I, I that's amazing. It says a lot for this episode. I think. OK, I happen. You know, I happen to like bottle shows, but come on. This is a, this is a good, good start. He, it's good it story. was well and, written, wasn't it? Yeah. And and the Klingon core is unbelievable. He yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Nasty yeah. Guy. All right. Well, this is great. This is a wrap. We did great. I'm I'm really glad we did this. I really like this episode. Uh, it kind of like made my day. 
it's just like this is such a great thing uh and i, I was just happy to do it so well i could tell i could tell I hope it, really animated <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait until we get we're, we're almost uh at a muck time which i think i rate higher than this one we are honestly logic we are waiting for season three uh no uh hey three more episodes left the alternative factor, the city on the edge of forever, and Operation Annihilate. Uh huh. And then a mock time, season two. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So one, season two. You bet. And uh, we know the director and the writers for those. I'll leave that for a surprise. So next week, are we? Uh, you and I gonna? We're gonna watch again. Uh, the alternative factor. Yeah. Uh, written by, uh, directed by Gerd Oswald and written by Don Ingalls. Don Ingalls. From March 30th, 1967. It's the, get a load of this. It's a 27th episode aired, but it's the 21th, 21th, the 20th, <laughs> 20th in production <laughs> order. All right. I think we did good. Thank you, Bruce. Okie dokie. Have a good one. Be good. Take care. I look forward to your picture. You, you're probably going, which one am I, am I talking about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doors open. Doors Doors open. open. <laughs> Ours goes to 11. No. No. <laughs> We're doing errand of... <laughs> good night, Bruce. Oh, good night. Great. Bye. <laughs>